So we're literally the base mix and I'm going to use coconut sugar. And let's talk for a minute about the sweeteners you can use. As I get my oats, and just a wee dash of salt if you want. Okay. So the main ingredients are rolled oats. You can get gluten-free oats. Um, you could use something instead of oats. They've got the Joy Oat Milk Powder. Let me let you guys see that, which is expensive. So that's why I'm not using it. Here we go. I think it's about $8 for this bag that makes about seven quarts of oat milk. And it's pretty nice. It's super fine. It is more fine than I've been able to, gr to grind mine so far, but I'm working on ideas. And it has been treated with an enzyme to make it more like Oatly. We can use rolled oats that are super cheap and work just fine. So I'm team oats, okay? So cocoa powder. You can have any kind of cocoa powder you want. I'm using cocoa powder because it's inexpensive. You could use cacao powder. You can use organic cacao powder, however you want. As this is with oats, this, and we'll talk about sweetener of your choice that you can use and two ways you can do it. I'm gonna use coconut sugar. I'm not using that much sugar. It's actually not super sweet at this point for me. Any dry sweetener to taste would work. So if you had a monk fruit or a stevia that's a one-to-one, -one, you could do the same amount. However, if you're using the stevia that you use like just a sixteenth of a thing or like I use an eighth of a teaspoon for a dozen muffins, that you're not going to do one-to-one -one or it's going to be nasty. If you're not sure or you want to be able to have a freedom of sweetener, we can just mix the oats and the cocoa, okay? Also, if you want to use a liquid sweetener, there are a couple of ways we could go about it. One is we can make the mix, mix in the liquid and dehydrate it and grind it again. So if you wanted to use liquid stevia, if you wanted to use maple syrup, or you could buy maple sugar, which is too expensive where I live to buy it. Um, those of you who want to sweeten with dates, two things I want to say. I would not use date sugar in this, the dry date sugar, because it's not going to dissolve. So it's still going to be chunky and we can get it fairly, like I could even make it in here and then put it in the spice grinder and it's still not going to be quite ground up enough. So what I would do is make the unsweetened mixture and put a dollop of date paste or date caramel into it. And in fact, I would, I would make a date paste with vanilla. So it is more interesting and that would be really awesome. If you wanted to put a liquid mixture with this, so let's, let's say I wanted to use lavender extract. I want to use peppermint extract. Again, we make the powder, mix in some of that liquid, dehydrate it, grind it again. Okay. Um, so some of these, it could be easier just to do whatever. We're also going to put this to hot milk. So we'll make one of these two and I'll show you. So um, you have an opportunity at that point to put anything else in there you want to put in there. Vegan marshmallows, whatever you want. But I know we all have different sweetener things that are okay and some that aren't. <laughs> That's one of the hardest parts of my job. So I try to make it where we can do it however. Could you put brown sugar? Vegan sugar? Yes. Maple sugar? Yes. Um, I'm trying to think of any other. The, the reason date sugar is different is date sugar is ground dates and it doesn't dissolve. All these other ones dissolve and hopefully that makes sense. Okay. Alrighty. So we're going to put in a half a cup of everything. <laughs> Even I can remember that. And actually, I'm going to put the oats in the bottom. Okay. This is a quarter cup scoop that I have right here. So I'm just going to use it. 
and then I'll, I'll show you and we'll talk about some some other things we can do in here too so if you I actually have some dried mint I don't know if I have enough to do this and the other recipe but I might just not do the other recipe and I'm gonna put half a cup of sugar in here and let me let you guys see that from the top and if you're like that's too much sugar for me use less if you're like that's not enough sugar for me use more <laughs> this today especially it's like make this the way you want to and i just this is trader joe's cocoa powder it is nothing fancy nothing exciting okay now here's the other thing you can put a pinch of salt in it and it will make it taste sweeter if you don't eat salt you don't have to do this but i mean it's probably a sixteenth of a teaspoon or like a normal person's pinch i have little mini mouse hands so i sometimes i'll put two pinches in and i'll let you see like really you're seeing all the salt that's in there so it's just not that much okay and let me go back to where my mint is yeah I don't have a whole lot of mint, but if you had dried mint, we can put that in there. We could also put a different herb in there. One of the things I did, besides throwing things around like a crazy person, so I made two mixes. This one is lavender cocoa. So what I did is I took lavender buds, too many so I had to make a double batch and we'll talk about that too so this is just lavender buds if you hate floral things don't do this you're not it's not gonna make you love it anymore I love it these are just Anthony's French lavender it's or organic right it's gluten-free it is culinary grade you want to make sure that you're not getting lavender for crafting and you know it talks about eating it um, I kind of like some savory flavors too so like we could do some some herbs and things like that I think that I'm gonna put my my mint in here and let's see if we can let's see if it works I put about a tablespoon of mint in there there is another thing that's gonna call for mint and I will put it in your recipe Still don't think that's going to be quite enough mint I probably would use two or three tablespoons and that's probably just a tablespoon and we're going to grind it as best we can now cocoa will have a little bit of caffeine but it's not enough to keep me up and I can't have any caff I get to have caffeine like once a month now maybe twice a month I had it today <laughs> So if I have a little manic, that's probably why. And this is about what a normal mix makes. Okay? Okay. So, for real, we're almost done with this. <laughs> Okay, and usually it looks pretty smooth now. You pat on that because a lot gets up on the top. And then also some sticks there. Can you guys see that? If not, let's try it from the side. See how some's trying to stick there? So I'm going to carefully remove this because some is going to poof. And that's what's on the top. And I'm going to get a good spatula, the thinnest spatula that I can find. Okay, I'm going to scrape some of this down. And I know you can't quite see that, so I'm sorry. But then I'm also going to come up under here and where it gets kind of compacted at the bottom, which is where actually it's the smoothest. And get those corners and around that blade at the bottom because that's where the most powdery goodness is. So if it's also going to stop the rest. So if we can get that moved around a little bit, 
then we can get the rest ground a little bit better. Though it's not going to be perfect. Okay, can you go? Sorry, I was not showing you. <laughs> it's pretty darn good. Um, and I can tell you too that other things aren't going to be perfect. But you know what? So what? This cost us, okay, coconut sugar is probably expensive. Maybe 75 cents for that, maybe 20 cents for the oats. Let's say 75 cents for the cocoa, which I don't think is true. So like $1.50, this probably makes 8 to 10 cups. And you can get all organic ingredients. And it's awesome. Okay. And I think that's good enough. Um, you could use a spice grinder. I'm just kind of lazy to do that. So again, I'm just going to scrape this lid out. I do this whenever I'm doing kind of a dry thing. Okay. And with all these dry mixes, I'm going to take it and taste it. Ooh, it's mintier than I thought it was going to be. That kind of worked. So let me put that on my, um, my options. Ooh, I didn't think it was going to be enough, but it's pretty nice. Okay, so let's make some of that because I need a snack. Here's a nice little mug. Do your best. That's how I feel today, most every day. <laughs> I'm going to, besides the, getting something on the floor, I'm just going to take some milk. Right now I happen to have unsweetened almond milk, Cliffy almond milk. And I'll show you the overhead, right? So I'm going to pour about a cup in there. You could heat this up on the stove. I am going to microwave it to make it easier. You can mix this up a variety of ways. I've gotten myself a little frother. And usually what I do is about two teaspoons of this mixture to a cup. So let me find a two teaspoon mix. There we go. This will work. Okay. That's half a tablespoon. It's a teaspoon. And as with any of these mixes, you put how much you want. You want yours extra dark and a little sweeter? Who knows? Let's try three today. Maybe three is, is the winner today. And you can start mixing it up with a spoon. So there's nothing wrong with doing it like that. Ooh. I put too much milk in. So I will clean this up. This is not the first time this has happened at my house. And also with this, I'm just going to rinse that bottom part off. And it also makes it a little frothy. I'm going to leave it on. I'm not going to rinse it quite yet. And I'm going to wipe all this mess that I made up. I did this yesterday. The day before I made the perfect cocoa without any mess at all. You guys will just have to believe me. And you can see, you're going to see some of the mix around the edges, just like you do with anything else, right? If you're using cocoa powder, that's just what's going to happen. All right. And so I'm going to put this in here for about a minute and a half. But these will last for as long as rolled oats will last and cocoa, which is over a year. So you just want to keep it dry. And again, so like if you put any kind of liquidy things, it needs to be all the way, all the way dry. And I've just been keeping them in here with little masking tape labels. And I'm going to bring this back because it's probably going to overflow in there a little bit too. And Cheryl just cleaned out the microwave. So let me make sure I didn't leave anything. I don't want to be in trouble. 
and actually I didn't spill any more. Okay, right? So that looks pretty good. I'm gonna froth it up a little bit more because some of the mix isn't gonna be there. And also this will help make it frothier. I think this, you can get one of these from anywhere from $8 to $14. And it'll do some of the same stuff that the air disc. Just be smart and don't overfill your cup like I just did. Oh, I just can't help myself. I just want to, maybe it makes me like a little kid. And I just want to swirl it everywhere. So I'm going to rinse this off. And literally, I'm just rinsing off the bottom part, putting it back in its little stand. Easy peasy. It's not bad. It's got a little hint of mint. I think I would put in, I still would put in more mint. Now let me make that note. I would be more likely to put in a quarter cup of dried mint. But that's pretty good. And let's say you taste it and you're like, that's not chocolatey enough for me. Because it could definitely be more chocolatey. Maybe you want to put a cup of cocoa, a half a cup of oats, and maybe three quarters of a cup of coconut sugar. So you can figure it out to get just your precise ratio. And it doesn't have any of those weird things in it. 